Welcome back to the True Body Intelligence Podcast. My name is Christopher Lee Maher, and I'm your host. And today, we're going to be digging into your relationship with inner and outer honesty and its limitations and how ultimately it impacts your lifetime accumulated stress load, lowers or raises your inner self-esteem, and impacts you at a deep emotional level to either help you feel more connected or less connected. <laughs> Welcome back, Christopher. Thank you, thank um, you, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this one. So now we're diving deeper, as you said, uh, into the subject of inner and outer honesty. So there was something that you told me off camera that I found very interesting and I want you to expand on that a little bit. Sure. You said there's a difference between telling the truth and being honest. Yes. And I think that this really goes to the core of what you might want to expand on. So if you can just take a few moments to talk about this part. Sure. Um, what comes up for me when you ask that question is, you know, where does the listener lie? on that scale, right? Or do you fudge some of the truth, right? So, so truth is relative, uh, but it's also objective and subjective, which is very interesting. Lying is either you're lying or you're not. And then honesty is whether or not I'm allowing you in on how I'm feeling about how you're making me feel, right? So that's an emotional withhold. I don't want to interrupt you, but that, there's an interesting thought there. What happens in your relationship to yourself when you're talking about inner honesty? So would it relate to being honest with yourself with how you make yourself feel? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, because from my investigation of working with people, people are really good at one and they're usually poor at another. Right? So some people are inwardly honest, super good at that, right? But they're terrible at being outwardly honest. And then other people are great at being outwardly honest, and they're terrible at being inwardly honest. And so the key is, is to understand how that's impacting you as it relates to stress, right? Because most of what true body intelligence is here for is to reduce the lifetime accumulated stress load and the daily accumulated stress load. And so the more comfortable you are being inwardly honest with yourself and outwardly honest with others, it's logical to conclude that you would take you would create less stress and take less stress into the next day if you felt more comfortable, right? But the question is, why do people feel uncomfortable being inwardly and outwardly honest? And all we have to do is look at history, right? And so when we got into tribal connection, um, there were certain behaviors and ideas um, and strategies that were acceptable and were unacceptable. And if some of those strategies go against your own personal set of internal ethics, morals, values, or principles, then being dishonest has value. And what I mean by that is it could be the difference between life or death, right? So, uh, can you clarify a little bit on that point? Yeah. So if you go back to, let's say 1500, 2000, 2500, 3500 years ago, if you were living in a tribal community and someone came in to, um, kill a member of your tribe, right. Or kill the entire, the male population of that tribe it might be beneficial for the mother to withhold that her daughter is down by the riverside uh, with her other two children so that they, um, those children are spared their life, right? So the survival mode. So survival mode. So when you're in fight or flight, then you're making different decisions as opposed to you being whole brain thinking, right? And whole brain thinking 
I can see the best avenue. And what that means is I'm able to maintain my own sense of sovereignty and deliver information that's most important and critical to my own set of values, morals, ethics, and principles, also in, as an individual, but in relationship to what the tribe is about, right? So uh, Native Americans had different traditions than, let's say, the Japanese. Japanese had different traditions from the Germans. Germans had different traditions than the Canadians. Canadians had different traditions than the Mexicans. And so um, when you get into uh, the individual, the familial, the community, the cultural, and the national identities, you got to be able to understand that if you did something outside of one of those uh, communities, what would happen? They might take your life, right? They might reject you or your entire family. Um, and so at some point, humans were forced to be dishonest, even though the things that they were being dishonest about were not in alignment with the tribal mindset. Because as you said eloquently, survival. So I want to throw one curveball here, and I know you yeah. love those. <laughs> but isn't it true, at least on the face of it, that basically all of the nature that we see around us is constantly in the game of trying to fool itself? Like, uh, you know, all animals camouflage all that sure stuff. so it's like is it because this level of existence is all about survival for sure okay yeah. so yeah so you're saying we're reaching a stage now in which we don't necessarily need that if we want to ascend to the next level we have to learn how to operate in a space in which we don't have to try and fool anything else but to actually be more truthful or to be more honest with ourselves in the environment and that's a new kind of that's operative a, level right yeah okay yeah that's totally a new space to operate in and the reason why true body intelligence is so important in this time for humanity is now there's the space to be able to do that. And right. because of the inertia of the previous pattern, now it's kind mm. of hard to, for people to try that's to right. stop these patterns. Right? That's right. And so that's why they lean on what we went over before in part two, which was the daily acceptable drugs. And this is just one of the, one of the ways through which they escape into this I guess we can call it dishonesty because they don't really look at the cause of, they don't look at the real thing that is happening. They just escape the real thing that is happening. So the reason you let your kids watch TV so they don't bother you, quote unquote. That's right. But really you're depriving both them, but you don't realize you're depriving yourself as well. That's from right. the connection. That's right. That which, you could be having. Which they will carry into their later years and yeah. will perpetuate it to their kids. Yeah. But you're also losing on what you were supposed to be gaining from right. interaction with your kids. Yeah. So that external thing, which is TV, one of the substances, is basically a tool to create that separation and no need to handle it because now it's off my, it's off my uh, to-do list. Like they can just watch TV. I can do whatever I want. Maybe I can watch my own YouTube videos or whatever. Yeah. And once again, you're not engaged with the honesty of the truth of the moment for yourself. Yeah, because see, honesty is an emotional quality, which means it's about connection. Oh, so honesty okay. is always about connection. It's always about connection. Either oh, I'm the truth letting. It's about some objective claim. That's right. Okay. Right, that's the difference. And so when I'm in honesty, I'm allowing you to connect to how I'm interpreting how you're making me feel or how this situation is making me feel. Maybe you're at a concert with your girlfriend and she leans into your ear and she goes, babe, I don't know why, but I feel really unsafe here. And you're like, well, how come you feel unsafe, babe? Well, it's just this guy over there keeps staring at me and you go, okay, well, how about we'll go over there away from this guy and we'll go back to watching the concert. And if he follows us, then we'll just go to the other side and watch a different show. Now that she let you in, on how she's feeling, you then get to take the appropriate action to then make her feel safe. But if she keeps that to herself, right, she's feeling unsafe and she's like, babe, let's just go get another beer. And you're like, babe, we just got a beer. You drank yours already? And she's like, yeah, I, was, I don't know. I'm just kind of thirsty. And, and now you're a man, you know, you're late and you're like, this seems a little weird, like two beers in 10 minutes. 
okay, look, I'll just get you, but the, count, the concert's loud, there's tons of people around everywhere, right? So it takes a lot of courage to be able to let someone in on how you're feeling because people feel inferior by allowing other people to see their inner deficiencies, their insecurities, their fears, and their limiting beliefs, right? As a society, we've been taught to, to cover those up as fast as humanly possible so that people can buy into our, project, our projective image, right? That's adaptable and adjustable relative to the situation that we're in. All that is operating at a deep unconscious level and so the question is, how do we interfere with that? And what's the importance? What's the value of doing that? Well, the beautiful thing is, is that in Chinese medicine, you have different meridians. What that means is a channel of electromagnetic energy that flows from your organ through the top of your body to the bottom or the bottom of your body to the top or the middle to the top or the top to the bottom. Okay, or, oh, no. or the top to the middle. So when you're following these channels of energy, each one of them has a different type of consciousness attached to it, which just happens to be that the channel for inner and outer honesty is the bladder channel, right? The right side of the bladder channel, outer honesty, it's masculine. The left side, inner honesty, it's feminine, okay? It's also the center for emotional balance. And so how do I maintain a high state of emotional balance? Well, I'm inwardly and I'm outwardly honest about how I'm feeling about the dynamic that I'm currently in. And then I can choose to inform or I can choose to withhold, right? But even when I'm withholding verbally, people can always feel it at a deep emotional level. So if somebody comes in the room and they're anxious, right? or they're fearful. They might put on a good face, right? But we can still feel like, dude, what's going on with Jake? It just like, it just feels weird today. And now I, it's tension in the room. And now it's tension, it's stress in the room, it's affecting everyone, right? Even though they're trying, even if they're doing it to do everyone a favor because yeah. they had a bad day, they don't want to ruin it for everyone. What they're really doing is they're making this invisible object that nobody can touch until they bring it up. Yeah. And now it creates yeah. unnecessary tension for everybody. So they're yeah. actually doing a disfavor for everyone. Yeah. And the same thing goes with your internal state. Like if you hide it from yourself, it doesn't mean that it doesn't stress another part of your system. Uh, how do you do that though in the context of our current society in which not everybody are enlightened yet? So like how do you do it in the context of a real possibility that you will be judged and you will feel the consequence of it? Like, So how do you start? How do you bring up the courage to actually express yourself how do you create the safe space for yourself to do that, even if other people might not reciprocate with what you need, which is... Yeah, it's great. This is a great question. And for me, the obvious answer is you start with people you trust, mm -hmm. right? And when you have everybody, hopefully everyone has someone in their life that they trust a bit. And it could be simply as, as saying like, you're in the middle of like a movie theater and you're with your mom and your 13 year old girl and you're like, mom, I'm starving. Like, I'm getting like hangry if I don't get some food in my belly. And she could say nothing and then get in the car and the ride home and be a moody mess, right? And ruin everybody's 30 minute drive home because she isn't getting the food that she wants. Or she can simply lean into her mom's shoulder or dad's shoulder or brother's shoulder and go, oh my God, I'm starving simply by informing someone else and inviting them into your internal experience, your relationship with that experience changes. Because people really want to be heard, they want to be connected to. And then if you said that to me and I was your brother and I go, dude, I'm starving too. And you're like, should we tell dad? And I'm like, let's tell dad. I'm like, dad, look, we're starving. Like we need to get some food. And he's like, I'm hungry too. Are you in love with this movie? And we're like, no. And he leans over to mom and goes, look, the kids aren't in love with this movie. We're all starving. We're going to, if you love this movie, it's great, but we're going to the pizza place next door. And we'll be right back. Right? And mom's like, go ahead. Have fun. Otherwise, you got three people sitting there suffering for no good reason. Yeah. Right? And by sharing and you inviting them in, now your family's closer because 
just on the basics, you can let someone in on how you're feeling about what's going on. Or another example, um, this is more difficult. Your husband, right, um, is speaking to you in a manner that's just a little too loud, right? And you got two choices here, right? You can say, I don't like it when you talk to me this way. Or you can say, hey, when your voice gets loud, I get a little scared and it makes it difficult for me to understand what you're talking about. Now I've neutralized the whole situation. He then understands what? That, oh, wow, me raising my voice makes her feel unsafe. She takes him to the doctor. He's 64 years old. She realizes his voice is loud because he's losing his hearing. Mm. Right? And now it's no longer personal. You see? But if we refuse or avoid allowing people in on how they're making us feel, then they have no way of connecting to us. And if we're giving this, them this projective image that's been over-adjusted or over-adapted, they're relating to something that's false anyway, which means they're never relating to who we are. And so if you want to go through the world and you want people to be able to relate and communicate and connect to you, you have to tell them and let them in on how the situation is making you feel. Some people will adjust and make you feel more comfortable and other people, they're really never designed to adjust, right? So they're just going to stay who they are, yet by letting them in on how they're impacting you, it's changed your relationship with them because at least they know if they're informed, they can make a choice without the information. We can't help Derek. Derek gets no love, no affection, no attention, no solutions. Because many times, you know, when, and this is more difficult for men, women are going on and on and on on the same subject, right? But the reason why they're going on and on and on is because they feel unsafe about something. And if the husband or the boyfriend or the girlfriend, uh, says to the woman says, Hey, I think you're feeling unsafe about something. Well, I was wondering when you were going to pick up on that. Now they have a connection. They have a connection that's actually real and authentic. If I'm over adapting and over adjusting in order to make you like me or feel comfortable with me, there's a cost. The cost is I lose myself my connection to myself in the process. And then what do I open myself up to? I open myself up to sweets. I open myself up to nicotine. I open myself up to alcohol. I open up myself to recreational drugs, pharmaceuticals, all because of one poorly um, executed strategy, which was to be outwardly dishonest. So the truth will set you free should have been honesty would set, will set you free. Yeah, honesty will set you free because it allows everyone to be with you. But if Otherwise, who you really yeah, are in that moment. Who you really are. Yeah, Otherwise, we're making assumptions. And even if the, the other person is not willing to change, well, at least, at least now you know yeah. that they are a person that in the presence of which you either cannot be when you're in a certain state or you just cannot be around, period. Yeah. But you would never know that unless you would actually tell them. So even then, it's better for you to know than to not know. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So no matter what, it always begins and ends with you speaking the truth and feeling the truth and like being honest with yourself. Yeah. I mean, being connecting to who it is you are and what you're feeling, right, is different than some um, projective sense of what truth is, right? It's just, this is how I'm feeling, right? Well, hey, let's go boating today. Dad, I'm feeling way too tired to go on boat today. Where's the note? I don't want to go. Well, come on, Butch, let's go. I told you, I don't want to go. Quit pushing me. If you just simply said, Dad, I feel exhausted today, Dad would have left it alone 0.02 seconds because humans have rarely been trained to let people in on how they feel about what's going on. People then have to make assumptions and then they either withdraw or they become too pushy 
And so the bladder, which is where honesty comes from, if you look at the bladder in the body, the bladder is the top of the bottom. It's the bottom of the top. It's the only organ that's directly in the middle from left to right and only the only organ directly in the middle well, from back central. to front. It's central. Hmm. And so it's the center for balance. In Chinese medicine, they call it the master channel. Why? Because all mastery begins with inner and outer honesty. It's also interesting that people always, I just realized this, the difference between truth and honesty is that people, when they find a conceptually true reason for something, they then feel excused ignoring the the other person's experience. So for example, somebody would say, you know, uh, I, I can't focus today or I'm not in my, I'm, I'm not in my best self. So maybe I don't. I don't feel like going out right now. And then the other person would say, well, that's just because you didn't sleep enough last night because you didn't, because, you know, you didn't go to, you went to sleep too late. Okay, so that's like, it might be true, yeah. but it doesn't change the fact that right now, yeah. that's how they feel. That's right. So just because you understand why that happened yeah. doesn't give you the right to ignore the fact that that person feels that way now. We're here now. So, and that opens the opportunity to actually be more, uh, it's aware of what's going on now to put an emphasis there for the other person's experience and for your own experience versus the reasons for these experiences. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, well, I feel like that it, actually, there's one more thing that I want you to add on this subject, if you don't mind, what would be an advice or two of how to go about one is that you gave is very helpful which is to try and do it with people that you trust that hopefully you have a couple of them or even if you don't maybe you have a dog that you can be truthful with um honest honest, honest. You, yeah, you can make into, you, yeah yeah you can be honest in truth and honest exactly yeah and maybe you can maybe you have a dog that you can just be honest with um is there another piece of advice that you can give that people can easily implement yeah, I mean, the first is to be honest with yourself. But maybe that's not that easy. Like, how, how would you go about starting meaning, to notice, just meaning, paying attention? Meaning that's the first, right? right? Because the more willing I am to be honest with myself, the easier it becomes to be honest with others. I see what you're saying. You're saying, so if I tend to brush things under the rug for myself, so, I would do it way easier with others. others. For sure. Okay. Right. And so... That's a really good advice. Yeah, and true body intelligence, the reason why we begin with the self is because we already know that everything that exists, that is an impediment to our expression of intelligence, lives inside the physical body. And so we want to get people to turn their senses inward, initially tune in to what it is you really need. And if from that place, communicate clearly with your sphere of influence and then allow them to help you take heart filled action to your own benefit. Without that, how can I actually have someone inside my own experience? Another trick that I found to use with myself when I uh, was going through some of my transformations is basically uh, burn all the bridges for my future self to try and uh, pull any, anything in my direction. So for example, if I knew that, um, I'm trying to think of a specific example, I can't right now, but, but if I would have a tendency that I considered not to be healthy or whatever it is, and I thought that by convincing others that everything is all right around it, I will get to keep doing that. Um, and I think that this can apply to anything from, you know, the thing you prefer to do that other people tell you that maybe it's not healthy for you, like either drugs or, um, even things you're just overdoing, like certain types of food or whatever it is. Um, I, what I learned is that if I just, in the moment that I find it in myself that I'm in a state where I just, I will just speak the truth or speak honestly, then I immediately burn the bridges for my future self that might, might be in a weaker state. That guy might try and sabotage the situation and try to actually, you know, obfuscate certain things or uh confabulate or whatever it is then in that case if i just said it now i just said it and now there's no more chance for you to basically go back and say something else yeah i call that calling yourself out really right because as you call yourself out you're free to then be yourself 
right? Like my book is called Free for Life, right? So part of the process is tuning into your own inner deficiencies, your own insecurities, your own limiting beliefs, and then admitting those to people out loud. And then when you admit them out loud, they no longer have any power to create. Yeah, it's exactly what it is, calling right. yourself out. Yeah, so when you say, oh man, look, here's the truth. I can go out with you tonight, and if I have one beer, the chances that I have 10 are pretty good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose to invite you to come to my place to barbecue, and we watch a basketball game instead. That's going to be better for me. And now that person gets to go, okay, Bush, that sounds great. Let's do that instead. If I pretend and I over adjust and over adapt to what this other person wants to do and I ignore my own limitations, then what's going to happen? I put myself in a compromising position and that one beer could turn into 10 and then I wake up in the morning and I've compromised myself now ethically, morally, and principally. And then I feel bad about myself. And now I feel bad about the relationship. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how can I numb out from this bad feeling I'm having about myself. And so really, and the reason why this is important as it relates to true body intelligence is because as you remove the tension and the stress out of the urinary bladder channel, muscles and the fascia connected to those channels, you have direct access to inward and outward honesty more available to you and you feel much more courageous when you take those steps and now you're building inner self-esteem how can you ever build inner self-esteem without having access to inner honesty how can you build outer self-esteem without having access to outer honesty because what you're projecting forward is your own limitations and you're going to allow everyone to buy into your image rather than tune into where you're really at, right? So example is, how are you doing today, Butch? Oh, I'm fine. Well, there's an acronym for that, fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. So when someone says that to me, I then ask a deeper question. Okay, I get that you're fine. What I'm asking is, how are you feeling today? And then there's a pause. And then I give them space. And now they have time to tune in. Well, I don't really know what you mean. Okay. Do you feel hungry? Do you feel happy? Do you feel joyful? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel tired? Like I could go on a list for like 40 minutes if you want me to break out a bunch of adjectives. And then sure enough, as I go down the list of like, well, I mean, if I were really honest, then they always sell that part. Well, if I was really honest, I'm a little frustrated. And this is why now we have connection. Otherwise, I'm just buying into your deflective language and I'll never get to really connect to you. And if I care about you, I could ask you a couple questions. If I care about myself, I could ask myself a couple basic questions. So I, I wanted to ask you a question that in my mind at least seems to be related, but something tells me there will be a deeper subject. But it, it had to do with this because the subject was the, the being honest, internal honesty and external honesty. And I wanted to touch on this dichotomy between the internal and the external world and how they relate to each other. And this whole idea, the idea is that the internal world is, the external world is really a reflection of the internal world. And, but not in a metaphorical sense, but in a very real sense. So I wanted to, I guess, get a little bit more of your wisdom about that part of it. Okay, that is, uh, how do we say it? That's like a full episode, right? To, to really get into that. And I think what would be more fair is, you know, to realize that when you're learning something, it takes a lot of time to process. And I think we binge a lot of information. And when you're talking about deep emotional information, uh, people get triggered. Like, you know, stuff we talked about before, we talked about true body intelligence, we talked about the daily acceptable drugs, now we're talking about inner and outer honesty. You know, these are all triggering conversations with people. So I think what would be fair is to allow them to process all this because I know what it's like to go into 
to dig deep and to ask yourself the deeper questions and to find the space to want to be really honest, it takes a little bit of time. So before we get into that depth of subject, I want to give you time to process inner and outer honesty efficiently, figure out which one you do better, and then figure out a strategy to increase your intelligence around the other one. So if you find it difficult to be honest with yourself, simply ask yourself a couple questions at the end of the night. Keep a journal beside your bed. Ask yourself two or three questions. If you can answer those questions, then great. Maybe you answer those questions in the morning. If you find it more difficult to be outwardly honest with others, take a risk with people that you already know. And then let them know things about you that you've kept from other people. I mean, that you've kept from them. And I'm willing to bet you they'll be able to relate to your experience. And you'll realize that everyone that's in your life struggles from similar things and that we're all in this together. And in order to build a powerful life where you master your life, you're going to have to develop inward and outward honesty at a really proficient level in order to get the types of experiences that you really crave in your heart. Thank you for tuning in to today's content. This will be made available in its full form of everything we put together for you at truebodyintelligence.com. And at truebodyintelligence.com, you can tune into my book, Free for Life, a U.S. Navy SEAL's unique journey to inner freedom and outer peace. And there I will teach you at a much deeper level. And this will be really, really, really good reference tool for you. Plus, the audio book has an opportunity to allow you to start the program already by purchasing the one with the energetic integrations and that will help you get started all of this content will also be available on all major platforms apple podcast spotify instagram TikTok, facebook x and youtube